Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the AOPEN AX4B533 tube motherboard. What is included in this package are some cables. They have included an ATA100 cable as well as an ATA66 and the floppy cable. Also included is a case badge. This here is for the audio, the tube audio. I'll go through how all this connects up a little later on. Also, they have included the full version of Norton Antivirus 2002 software, some manuals, a guide, and as well, the motherboard. This motherboard is based upon the Intel 845E chipset. Let me now just go through and highlight some of the key features about this particular motherboard. Right here is where the Pentium 4 socket 478 CPU gets installed. You can put up to 2 gigabytes of DDR memory on this board and by the way it does support PC3200 I tried that memory and it does work in the board also right here are your IDE controllers your floppy controller is right there you have three PCI slots one AGP slot this AGP goes up to four times AGP maximum also on this board you need a Pentium 4 power supply that has two feeds. There's one power connection right here and there's one right here. Now there is three fan headers on this board. There's one right here, there's one right here, and there's one right here. Right here is where you would plug your PS2 keyboard or mouse into, your parallel port, your two serial ports, the Realtek 5.1 channel audio, you have an Intel LAN port, as well as two USB 2 ports. One very distinctive thing about this board is the tube sound, and it's supplied by the Realtek ALC 650 AC97 Code C onboard 5.1 channel vacuum tube audio. Now, what this does is give you great, clean, crisp, clear sound like you've never heard before, and it's done using this vacuum tube. Now this tube gets installed in the board very very easily and I would recommend you use a tissue when you're doing this not to get any oil from your hand on the vacuum tube itself. You can see here it's extremely easy to install. Also included is this tube audio card and this card gives you the ability to have a line in. You have a 6.3 millimeter headphones jack plug here as well two RCA outs, one for the left channel and one for the right as well as an optic out. Now this goes connected to the board via this cable. The cable goes connected into this card and then it goes plugged into the board and then you would install this in your case. I will be looking at some of the key features within this particular BIOS first looking at the advanced BIOS features. Within here you can go in and enable or disable your L1 or L2 cache on your CPU and you can also enable or disable different boot devices, first, second, or third. Now something a little different in this particular BIOS is a thing called Easy Restore. And what this feature does is basically take an image of your hard drive. It does all this automatically. You don't need any extra software. It takes an image of the hard drive and stores that image on your particular drive. As an example, an 80 gig drive would only take up around 100 megabytes of space on your hard drive. Something else here in this particular area is a thing called Vivid BIOS. And what this does is it gives you text as well as graphics on the same screen, the post screen, when you're booting up your computer system. And you can actually change that image there as well. Within the advanced chipset features, you can go in and change the memory timing. And you can either do this manually or you can do a buy SPD option. Also in here you can go down and adjust the system BIOS cacheable, the video BIOS cacheable, as well as adjusting the AGP aperture size. The integrated peripherals part of this BIOS is responsible for controlling the primary IDE, the secondary IDE, as well as all the USB, the onboard audio, the onboard LAN, as well as the functions for the serial ports, the parallel ports, etc. Within the PC health status, you can go in here and view all the different temperatures, the fan speeds, and the voltages. You can also set a CPU warning temperature. Lastly, I will be looking at the frequency voltage control. In here, you can go in and adjust 
the different front side bus settings as well as the CPU voltage setting. Now there is a feature on this BIOS called Watchdog Timer and what this timer does is sense if anything is wrong with the CPU. If it's overclocked too high it will just set it back to its default speed. Now this is bad quite frankly for overclocking because you can't overclock. Unfortunately I've tried everything. I've tried adjusting the front side bus up and the voltage all the way up and by the way this voltage does go all the way up to 1.85. That's pretty high for a Pentium 4 CPU quite frankly. A lot of BIOSes only go to like 1.7. However, it doesn't matter in this particular BIOS. They might be releasing a new BIOS in the future where you can somehow disable this watchdog timer and enable you to overclock. The Sci Software Sandra CPU result is 4,424. The CPU multimedia benchmark is 8,909. And the memory benchmark is 2,029. The PC Mark 2002 results are the CPU score is 5,538, the memory score is 4,774 and the hard drive score is 808. The 3D Mark 2001 second edition result is 11,687. The settings that I will be using for the Comanche 4 demo are a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024, the bit depth is 32, texture compression is checked, I've disabled VSync and hardware shaders are checked and the result is 39.57 frames per second. For the Quake 3 Arena demo these are the following graphic settings a video mode of 1280 by 1024 a color depth of 32 bit the geometric detail is at high the texture detail is at max the texture quality is 32 bit and the texture filter is trilinear and the result is 183.4 frames per second. In the XS mark I will be using all the default settings except for a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit. And the result is 5728. Using Unreal Tournament 2003 at a resolution of 1024 by 768 the benchmark results are the flyby is 150 and the bot match is 54. And at the resolution of 1280 by 960, the flyby is 113 and the bot match is 53. Well, does the vacuum tube really give you better audio? Simple answer is absolutely. If you have the proper gear to accept all that high quality audio, you're not going to get really good audio, period, from plastic speakers. You really need to have that good audio equipment to really receive all that good sound. So keep that in mind. You buy the board, you have crappy speakers. No, it's not going to work at all. This board again has the onboard LAN port, the onboard audio. It also has the onboard USB 2 support. Something it doesn't have, however, is the ATA-133. It only supports ATA-100, and also with this board, it's not the greatest with overclocking. But again, almost all of AOPEN's products are extremely high quality, and that is something that really captivated me about this particular product. Very, very high quality. Overall, this is a great product. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, be sure to pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And when you're there, go in and register. If you haven't already registered, registration is completely free. You can go in there after and leave your own suggestions and comments and find out about all the other products I video review. Until the next time, take care.